So welcome back to Bunter's Yard. These are, as you probably know, uh, class 43 HSTs um, with the swallow livery. Um, now these are a pair, so we've got one's a dummy car, one's a power car, and um, they've got working lights. So they're, they're okay. Um, wasn't sure whether to put this actual uh, video in the eBay rescue section but uh, they're not really being rescued we're just going to weather them up um, to make them look a bit more sort of in service now uh, there's uh, quite a few images around of these some of them look absolutely pristine um, some of them are, are really mucky and we kind of go middle ground but the roof um, will get its coat of soot so one of the things that we're going to do first of all I think is to um, we're going to fade that yellow down just a little bit uh, possibly won't show a lot after we've got the weathering on but to make a start on that we'll fade that and normally pick up quite a bit of grime on the front obviously as it's uh, speeding down the uh, the track at 125 miles an hour and the soot on the top seems to just sort of stop there at that back vent so where we go into that like the passenger section um, they seem to be suddenly clean but I uh, will so we'll fade that in a little bit and then um, the, the bottom's not going to be too bad we're going to just uh, give that a coat of black just take the plastic look away and then a couple of uh, shades on there and then a little bit of grime along the bottom just to uh, blend it in below the waistline and then the back they seem to if in my mind the backs always seem to be quite dirty because as it goes through the the, the brushes that uh, wash the wagons uh, and the rolling stock my, my mind is that the, the, the back will get missed a little bit anyway so we're going to crop that up just a touch so um, yeah first thing is we're going to fade this yellow back and if you watched the other video of the class 20 just recently we used black to make the uh, paint darker we're going to use white to make it just a little bit lighter so it's got like a sun faded look and to do that we're going to use a an oil paint uh, I like to use oils as you know because they're easy to clean off and make a mistake um, they take quite a lot of time to dry so I can think about it for a day and if I don't like it I can just change it tomorrow um, so they're quite easy to, to work with so tiny tiny dots of, uh, of the white and then we're just going to brush it in uh, with a soft brush and we need to brush it in until there are no um, sort of brush marks and no obvious obvious patches you can go over this a few times uh, if you want to wait for it to dry then put another layer over the top you'll end up with uh, a patch that's particularly uh, more faded than the rest we're just going to give it one pass today see it just fading just a little bit just a bit lighter just takes the sort of newness off of the uh, for that roof uh, of the cab if you want to more add, add some more paint here you can add more oils and uh, make the uh, the effect a bit more um, effective see you just just starting to go maybe we'll just try a little bit more if the effects too heavy you can just clean it off you can um, just with a with a, a clean brush or you can um, damp your brush in thinners and uh, and clean it off totally start again just make sure you use the right thinners for oil um, this is a, a an odorless one or a low odor uh, thinners I'll put the link down below for, uh, for this actual bottle that I've used here with the thinners and also this white paint. This is an oil from Windsor and Newton. There we go. So we've made uh, a slightly patchy effect. So the top I want it to fade more than the uh, sort of around the front so that the flat surface is where the sun's going to beat down. 
that's going to fade more. And just the front of the uh, of the loco as well. I'm just going to fade that grey just down just a little bit. I, I, like I say, most of this won't show really when we get to the end because there will be uh, different levels of weathering over the top. But it's uh, you know it's there and it's a, um, a layer and it will have an effect. You will see it a little bit, but it just won't be as noticeable as it probably is now. But it just adds another texture, another layer to the whole uh, to the whole wearing effect. Just going to brush it into that red livery line just to fade that down because um, that would have got. Um, weathered as well by the sun and obviously battered by the elements that are hitting the front of the loco at 125 miles an hour. So before we carry on with any of the weathering, we're just going to mask the windows off a little bit. And we're using a thing called Frisket, which is a low tack film. It's got like the stickiness of a post-it note, so it's, uh, it's quite easy to apply. Um, and if you put it on fresh paint, it doesn't take the paint off, it's quite a low tack as I say. Now because it's clear, I can see the window through it and it allows me to draw out what I think the arc of the, uh, the wiper would look like. So to mark it up quickly with the pencil. And then take it off without damaging the window. any time now there we go okay I'll put it back on the back end just so you can see um, what we've achieved by that is you can see the pencil marks see if we get a better view of that hang on I'm just going to draw it um, a little bit a nicer curve now it's flat and with a, a sharp blade we can then cut out the the mask. So now if we take that off its backing, we can just put it in the correct position on the front of the cab. And that masks that window off. The side windows probably won't worry about masking those. We'll just uh, leave them or, um, sort of open to the elements. Let's just position that where we want it to go. And that masks that piece off. You could use, um, there are lots of sort of masking paints as well. Um, I'll put links in my favourite one down below as well. That's the, the Vallejo one. Um, but Frisket seems to be a good uh, good idea for this. So our next job is to just do a little tiny bit of a pin wash. So some of these details, uh, there's not many details on this where we can use a pin wash, but around the doors, you've got the door handles and um, some holes where the where the, the nuts and bolts go to fit them on and we're going to use our um, oil brush and I'm going to make up a colour that I feel would be appropriate I don't have the correct one at the moment so we're going to mix it using two colours this is dark brown and the next colour is um, I think it's called baby vomit or something it's actually called ochre so we're going to use that it's a really uh, interesting colour but between the two they'll kind of get us the uh, the shade that we're after and in the other world next to that on the palette we're going to put in um, some of the, the thinners that we use for our oils and this just makes uh, a wash so we need a quite a uh, really fluid wash very sort of um, very runny and you can see it there 
and we're just going to touch it on the bits where the details would be it's around some of the panel lines the doors the handles um, and just let it run so uh, capillary reaction will will take it and take it into place and then we can take some of it off where it's overrun you can let it dry if you want to and then clean it off uh, more precisely with uh, with a small brush um, dampened with thinners but um, this will be fine as we are for this one we'll do the same with the back door now the lines around the doors are not particularly uh, particularly pronounced on this particular um, loco so we can only do the best we can but it will all add to the overall effect at the end so a brush dampened in thinners and we can just tidy up some of the lines and just wait for the uh, the thinners to evaporate before you continue with your next coat of um, whatever it might be whether it's an oils or uh, or an acrylic and the same on the front now if we look on lots of these uh, lots of pictures of these there is a, like a panel on the front where that number is you can see the little line um, it's just really not um, thick enough to take um, any sort of real effective pin wash so um, we're going to come up with another plan for that I just want to fill these holes in with a bit of colour so just may just just sort of highlight them just a little bit now on the front underneath the uh, the headlights there we're going to use a dry brush um, technique to add in some um, streaks of dirt. So as this is running down the line at over 100 miles an hour and the rain is beating down and it's all dirty, uh, it's gonna push the um, any dirt on the wagon, on the loco, um, into definite streaks. And if we just use a dry brush, so we've, we've put a little bit of paint on there and we've wiped most of it off on the cloth and as we use these um, sort of vertical strokes, hopefully we'll get a better focus in a minute. There we go. You can then see those streaks start to appear. I'm trying to do it a bit heavier at the bottom because it will collect around the bottom, then up the side as well. We're trying to go in the direction of that you think that the. Uh, the motion of the train and the wind would actually push the uh, the dirt and as you uh, do that you'll see that the small panel line there along the sort of the waistline of the lower waist that will be highlighted as well with the dry brush that's the other good thing about dry brushing and I'm just going to a tiny bit just along the um, the front underneath the window again where the, the, the rain has pushed the dirt up the um, up the front of the loco onto the window and over the roof line see so brush needs to be really really dry for this So our next stage is to do some of the uh, the soot um, effects on the top. Now I've set the airbrush pressure to about 15 psi, so it's uh, quite a low pressure. And by doing that, you can control the lines. Uh, the closer you get, um, the thinner the line of uh, of, um, of paint will be. So rather than just doing an all-out sort of overall effect, um, which can be a bit more precise, and try and get these lines. If you look on lots of pictures of uh, of the 
uh, class 43 they seem to get these either three or five lines at the top and it's obviously uh, a, a vent or an intake there I imagine it's an intake at the front could be a vent if you going back with a guess uh, but there always seems to be a soot deposit on the roof line so um, we've included that and then the, the roof from that section until um, probably about 75% of the of the wagon they would be um, the roof would be pretty much uh, black and and uh, covered in soot now I've used just plain black here not um, not generally saying I I do because I don't think black exists that much in uh, um, in what we do most most of the things like soots and oils and greases are going to be black with brown or they're not going to be quite black they'll be off but we're going to add some color a little bit later on so this may look at some point just a little bit over the top and a bit garish but um, hopefully the next couple of layers will will help us out a little bit on that So those um, those vents on the side there's normally sewer deposits around that and we're just going to very very slightly um, run it into the body line so there's no uh, sort of precise line where it finishes these vents midway they're just going to get a smaller amount of, uh, of sewer deposit put on that You could use um, pigments if you if you want to. There are um, soot coloured um, pigments. I don't find they work particularly well. I've never had that much luck. But if you did that, you would need to just make sure you use a uh, a matte lacquer on the roof line first. Otherwise, the um, the pigments wouldn't have anything to sort of bond to. Um, but it's just a personal preference. I've never had much success with any of the soot pigments that I've used. So just to add a little bit of interest to the rear of the um, the roof, just going to put in some soot lines where the wind would have um, driven any any exhaust fumes sort of down the back of the wagon. If I say wagon, and I mean loco, I'm sure you know what I mean. Um, just the word that's in my head at the moment for some reason or other. And these vents at the side, because they're normally a, like a, a customer facing part, because you know, people on the uh, on the track would come close to it. They're normally not as dirty as the rest. We're just gonna add a little bit of color in there just to, uh, just to add some interest. So for this part, we've taken the body off um, so that we don't get any overspray onto the body as we do the uh, the bogus and the side of the chassis and we're using the black primer just to take away a little bit of the uh, the plastic look it adds a tiny bit of texture and takes off that shine now don't go too heavy because obviously we've got the the pickup wheels there um, we don't want to get them too mucky because then we've got to clean them off after anyway and then we're going to use a uh, quite a thin coat of um, I can't remember the shade of the brown. I'll put the link down below. Um, but this is the Vallejo Air, which I've thinned down a bit further just to make it a bit easier. Um, now we're not going to try to cover everything. We're going to make some patches. So you can see we're just being a bit selective there, just kind of in the middle. And then most of this grime is going to come from below off the tracks so uh, most of what we're going to do is going to be in, in an upward direction so if we just spray very lightly again we're still only at 15 psi or so uh, so it doesn't sort of um, have a wide um, sort of coverage And then you can still see some of the black so it still shows the detail so we put the body back on and then we're just going to use the same color 
same pressure and you can just see very very slightly we're uh, just below that waistline and it just kind of brings the two parts back together again so that makes them look as uh, as one and it's been there it's quite a subtle um, uh, effect and quite a light coat you can just see it going on just there now in my mind it, that's going to be heavier around by the bogies where um, there's movement and the, um, the the rain and the dust and the grime is going to be picked up from the track and it's going to splash it around the side of the wagon. Now on the front we're just going to just the lower portion really I uh, just want to make that a little bit heavier and then we'll extend that dry brush sort of stroke up the front of the um, up the front of the windscreen as well. Now around the back, like I said, I think this would be, you know, particularly grotty inside, but grimy in there. So we're going to give that a coat of our grime. Now probably that connecting door wouldn't be dirty. I should have masked that off. I, I do clean that off in a moment. And then the, the, the grime will um, extend just slightly around the side of the, um, of the panel there. Just so you can see the edge there. It's really slight. This is just my version of what my mind says that you know, the weathering is, is going to be like on um, on these locos. Now just to add a, a bit more texture to the to the roof line because uh, that black is just too heavy I, I, I've never liked you know just plain black on the top we're going to use uh, the, the, again the same shade of brown still very very light passes and we're just going to put in some um, just some little marks there just just a just really just to break the roof line up. We don't want to take away from the fact that he's going to be black and sooty at the top, but um, just to make it less black. So coming towards the end and my particular favourite part of uh, any weathering is adding the powders. It just kind of ties it all together, brings it alive and we're using today Humbrol Dark Earth which is um, one of my sort of favourites. It's just a, a shade that I think just looks really um, appropriate for what we do and it covers really well. I just think it's a nice, uh, nice powder, Humbrol Dark Earth. I'll put the description down below. I'm just going to concentrate on the bottom edges of the bogies and these these boxes which um, I assume that they've got batteries in or something like that or some sort of hydraulics but I know someone will know and if you do know please uh, leave a comment in the uh, in the section down below and then um, next time I talk about them I won't feel quite as foolish as I do now um, but anyway and we've used different colours on these already, so things like um, the black primer and uh, and the grime from the airbrush and now the weathering powder. And it just gives different layers of textures and colours because they're never going to be just one colour. There's going to be um, different things and uh, different shades of uh, mud and grime and dirt. So they're never going to be just like plain black or, or all brown. So that's what we're trying to achieve here. Just remember after the uh, after you've finished to clean off the wheels properly because there will be overspray on those wheels. Now on the last couple of videos I realised right at the end that I didn't actually film taking off the mask uh, where the wiper blades go. So I just wanted to show you that. Um, I've used uh, a really sharp scalpel which would be so easy to unfortunately scratch the windscreen so I probably wouldn't suggest using the scalpel, maybe a cocktail stick would be a better option. 
and we're just doing a final touch of weathering powder on the roof line it's just a really small amount it's like dry brushing um, but rather than using paint we're using powder and as we flick across with our soft brush it just, some of the powder will just pick up on the um, on some of the detail lines there and when you've finished all this it needs a final coat of um, matte lacquer and that will just uh, tie everything together now, if you're not already subscribed please do uh, subscribe the, the, the link is um, down below and um, we've got some uh, new series coming up uh, soon so uh, hopefully you'll be able to join us on that so uh, we're looking forward to starting uh, work on those and um, that's it for now so I hope you enjoyed this hope you found something useful in this video and we'll see you soon